Welcome Germany, how exciting to think that only in a couple of hours Her Majesty the Queen will indeed be arriving in Berlin. Good afternoon and it is such a pleasure for me to be hosting this webinar on Royal Protocol. We will indeed be learning about Her Majesty the Queen's visit to Germany and we're going to study the rules and the behavior of British polite society. I'm joined by my colleague Pamela and James. How do you do, Pamela? How do you do, Lady Rebecca? How do you do, James? How do you do, Lady Rebecca? How do you do to Germany? Do you know it's interesting, this how do you do? And let's start on that before we even go any further. How do you do is indeed a greeting, and it is to be used amongst royal circles and polite society. And yet when I'm teaching how do you do to my lovely students, and I have very many German students, they tend to answer by saying, I am fine. Or perhaps, my name is Jan. So I do teach them that one of the rules of a polite introduction is how do you do is a greeting and it is to be answered with another how do you do. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Fabulous. Today we are going to be looking at Her Majesty the Queen's visit to Germany. We're going to be studying what is royal protocol and why do we have it. We'll be meeting the Queen and looking at the royal do's and don'ts, as well as the royal art of small talk, royal deportment and poise. What is modern etiquette and why do we still need it? And then if we have time, we're going to enjoy looking at the tradition of afternoon tea. A little bit about the format of this workshop. We will be looking at the PowerPoint presentation and there will be a lot of audio um, as well from myself and my colleagues. There will be a little bit of a survey and halfway through as well we will then be switching to the live camera. We're not going to do that at the moment because we don't want any technical glitches. Just to let you know as well that there are notes, which is why I have switched to this view. And in the notes, I have given some further detail of what we're talking about this afternoon. And there's also several lesson ideas for you to use if it is that you are a teacher and that you're tuning in this afternoon. A little bit about myself. I set up my event company three years ago, teaching etiquette courses to British teenagers along with EFL students. I actually work with three major German agencies and they've sent me about five and a half thousand German students so far. Not only do I teach etiquette but I also run tea and deportment activities. These are wonderful afternoons where we look at the etiquette of the tea table and we also learn about the rules of the Victorian tea table. It was very exciting for me to receive a phone call from Nadia. Nadia had said to me that the Queen is indeed visiting Germany this very afternoon and staying until the 26th of June. So it was wonderful to hear from her as well. So the first question we really have is what is royal protocol? And why do we have it? What do you think, James and Pam? Well, I think the world protocol is built up over many, many centuries that we've had the royal family. And it's a way that we engage with our royal family. Yes, it's certainly a very ancient idea, royal protocol. And I think it's a way that the royal family use a sort of standardized method of interacting with their public. They use the same manners for everybody. There's no status involved at all. You're absolutely right. It actually really is about courtesy and consideration for adults. We must remember that royal protocol really started in the medieval courts. However, the king and queen were behaving 
was a benchmark for the rest of the community to indeed behave. And we also must remember that before church and the monarchy did separate, the king and queen was seen to be divinely ordained by God. So it's very much for this reason that we had this pomp and pageantry almost giving our kings and queens of the day a divine status. And really very much since the modern times, our royal family and Her Majesty the Queen, along with Prince Philip, they serve once again to remind all of us about these traditions and what politeness really means, and I really hope that we don't lose this. So just a little resource, and apologies for this screen setting, but it is a useful link once again, Germany, to all you teachers who perhaps have tuned in. We're going to go to one of the very first books written about royal protocol, and this was by a wonderful Englishman called Daniel of Bethel. Let's visit him and let's take a deep breath and hope that our links are working. Indeed they are. And I know that Nadia very kindly sent all of you the links. What an interesting historical document. He comes by such a don't say very much. Always thank your host. Never speak with your mouth full. And don't mount your horse in your host's dining room hall. So I'd strong this book of civilized man served in England as a bench and it actually took us all the way through 1550. Erasmus wrote a handbook on good manners. I only have the Wikipedia link as you may order the book. But once again Erasmus looked around and saw that people were behaving simply atrociously. He thought the youth of the day were terribly vulgar and so he wanted to reinstate a form of etiquette and working with the royal courts. He wrote the book, A Little Book of Good Manners, and it is a gem to read. Now moving along really to one of the most famous benchmarks in our society is the De Brett's Book of Manners. And this is a lovely website which contains so much information, just very much came from the Royal House in the 1900s, and then came publishers of what really is social behavior and etiquette. If you have a little British etiquette and British behavior, they will refer you to the A, of which I heavily um, they give very good examples of what season. The season is a calendar of events, which is taken very much from the Queen's attendance to the Chelsea Flower Show all the way to her state visits. So it's a fantastic resource for any of you to use if you were interested in British culture and where we are at the moment. So without any further ado, let's go back to that wonderful day on June 2nd in 1953 when Her Majesty the Queen was indeed crowned at Westminster Abbey. Now I hope you do have the link. I'm going to take a chance of clicking on the link. What a wonderful day. What a wonderful day, Pamela. And I believe that you actually remember watching. I'm afraid to say I do. I was about five or six years old and staying with my aunt in North Wales. And I remember she had a very, very small black and white television that amassed a crowd of neighbors in the sitting room. And piles of lovely sandwiches and scones and cream cakes were made. And we sat watching the entire proceedings. And I was so thrilled with it. And tell um, me a little bit about what she's carrying on that day. The well, mm -hmm. I believe that the crown she's wearing when she enters the Abbey is uh, for the actual coronation is the King Edward's crown. And then that's changed. When she leaves the Abbey, she wears the Imperial State Crown. And uh, she was carrying the orb, which is symbol of her sovereignty. Indeed. And I believe the Divine Right of Kings, it was originally. Oh, and absolutely. As defender of the faith, yes. no? And the, the scepter 
which was, I believe, to signify temporal and equity behavior to her subjects. Ah, very good. Very, very good. Well, let's get to know the Queen a little bit. So, Nadia and our viewers who have tuned in, we've got some statements here that are true and false, and we're asking you if you are able to join in the survey, which of these 12 statements are false. The Queen is head of state of the UK and 53 other Commonwealth realms. Official royal residences are Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, Sandringham, and Balmoral. The Queen learnt to drive in 1945 when she joined the army. The Queen speaks fluent French and often uses the language for audiences and state visits. The Queen is patron of 620 charities and organisations. The Queen has given over 91 state banquets during her reign. The Queen is the elder daughter of George VI and Queen Elizabeth. The Queen has opened Parliament every year since 1953. The Trooping of the Colour is a ceremony to celebrate the Queen's coronation. The Queen was born on April 21st, 1926 and became queen at the age of 25. The first royal walkabout took place during the visit by the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh to Australia and New Zealand in 1970. The practice was introduced to allow them to meet a greater number of people, not simply officials and dignitaries. The Queen does not like animals. Well, indeed. Now, those are some little facts about Her Majesty the Queen. And if you are able to join in the survey, I'm just going to give you a couple of seconds. And really the whole purpose is to, to indeed find out how much you do and you don't know. So we're actually going to chat a little bit more about those statements. Very good. Mm -hmm. The participants are telling Rebecca that you are showing the correct statements because you are not in the slideshow, they can see your notes and they said they can read the answers. They can see my notes? Yeah, they, they can, can see, see your notes. Oh, I see. They are oh. not the slideshow, oh. so they know already oh. the statements. Oh dear, I'm sorry Germany. <laughs> I took this information so that we can indeed get to know Her Majesty. Oh, oh I should have, I should have. Let's go back to the full screen. <laughs> yes. Let well, me we do know that there are 53 Commonwealth countries, of which Her Majesty the Queen, ladies and gentlemen, is only sovereign of 15 of them. This sovereignty is not a political power, but it certainly helps to raise profile um, for the countries of which she is sovereign. Number two, the official royal palaces are indeed Buckingham Palace. I know many of my lovely German students who have visited London have all enjoyed going to Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, Sandringham and Balmoral. I've had the privilege of going for a weekend to Sandringham and I must say what a beautiful estate it is. There are very many other royal residences, St. James's Palace, the Royal News, News to name a few. However, the reason this is important for Her, Her Majesty is these are actual homes. Balmoral is up in Scotland and often the Queen visits there in September and often this is a good time for um, a lot of photo opportunities. Sandringham is where the Queen goes at Christmas and all British people indeed enjoy watching the Queen's speech but before that she goes to church, church on this Sandringham estate and it's a wonderful time to be able to see her. Buckingham Palace as you know of course, is in London, and Windsor Castle apparently is one of her absolute favourites. So yes, indeed, the Queen did learn to drive in 1945, and Pam, you've got some information about her role. I believe she was an ambulance driver, finally, but she did train as a mechanic, and I've seen pictures of her even in more modern times repairing 
various royal cars and Land Rovers at events and they've broken down when cars did break down. <laughs> How wonderful this is to think of her because really when we do see our Maj Her Majesty the Queen, she is either in a carriage or certainly being chauffeured around. It's wonderful to recognize that skill and courage that she had as a young ambulance driver and mechanic. She does indeed speak French. Uh, the Queen is patron of 620 charities. The reason why I wanted to include this is, well, I mean, really, it just shows in combination with the fact that she also gives 91 state banquets, which is number six, it certainly shows how very busy the Queen's diary is. Once again, it ra raises profile for all of these charities, and it gives British members of the public an opportunity to go out to see them, to dress up, although we will advise conservative dress indeed. Yes, number seven, the Queen has four children and eight grandchildren. And the Queen has indeed opened up Parliament. She's opened it every year except for two years when she was actually pregnant. But this is a wonderful state opening of Parliament, and it's when she also wears the royal robes that we saw in the coronation with the lovely state crown. It's also the only time in the British calendar that the three constituent parts of Parliament the Sovereign, the House of Lords, and the House of Commons are all together. The trooping of the colour was a little bit of a trick, and actually it is false. The trooping of the colour, which we celebrated just a couple of weeks ago in June, is actually to celebrate the Queen's birthday and not her coronation. Now, the Queen had her birthday on the 21st of April. However, April in England is notorious for its wet, rain, and lousy British weather, no? So they decided to move it to June in the hope that she has walkabouts. Um, certainly the Queen is patron of the Order of the Garter, and my lovely German students who are often over here visiting, I encourage you, if you can ever attend the ceremony and see the Queen, it is the oldest chivalry organization dating back to Edward III. And when you go to Windsor Castle to St. George's Chapel, you can see really the medieval arms and it takes you back to the days of the knights and it's just a wonderful occasion. The first royal walkabout was in 1970 and the reason why this is important is it really became the first time that British people could see the Queen instead of being officially presented to her. This sort of led to the ultimate democratization, if you like, of the royal family being seen as more accessible. And we all know that the Queen absolutely loves her animals. She's known for having her, her corgi dogs. And she is also patron of the Royal Ascot as the royal family who founded Royal Ascot in 1711 um, is a huge cause that the Queen enjoys. So let's find out about where Her Majesty the Queen is going to be visiting. We're going to click on the British Monarchy website. Once again, a wonderful resource for you to find out indeed about many of the Queen's activities. So, yes, James, if you'd like to read this bit about the Queen's agenda, and once again to remind any teachers tuning in that in the notes section there's uh, some ideas for some lessons for you to do. The Queen, accompanied by the Duke of Edinburgh, will make a state visit to the Federal Republic of Germany from 23rd to 26 June 2015. Her Majesty and His Royal Highness are visiting at the invitation of the President of the Federal Republic of Germany, Joachim Gauck. What follows is the outline detail for the visit. Tuesday. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh will arrive at Berlin Tegel Airport in the early evening and will be received by an honor guard and 21 gun salute. Tomorrow, Wednesday 24th of June, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh will be ceremonially welcomed with military honours at Bellevue Palace, the official residence of President Gauck. They will then travel by boat along the River Spray to the Chancellery, where the Queen will meet Chancellor Angela Merkel. 
The Queen will then lay a wreath at Germany's central memorial for the victims of war and dictatorship. In the afternoon, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh will attend the 50th anniversary of the Queen's lecture at Berlin's University of Technology to be delivered by Neil McGregor. That evening, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh will return to Bellevue Palace for a state banquet hosted by President Gulk, 5th June. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh will travel with President Gulk and Ms. Schatt to Frankfurt. There they will visit St. Paul's Church, where they will meet representatives of the local community and hear about the significance of the building as the birthplace of parliamentary democracy in Germany. The Minister President of Hesse will then host a lunch in honour of the Queen at Romer, which has been Frankfurt City Hall for more than six centuries. After leaving the Romer, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh will greet members of the public in the central square. On returning to Berlin that evening, they will attend a garden party hosted by the British Ambassador. Friday, 26 June. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh will greet members of the public in Platz and view the Brandenburg Gate with the Mayor of Berlin. They will then fly from Berlin to Sell Military Airport in Lower Saxony and will visit the Bergen-Belsen Memorial Site. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh will lay a wreath at the inscription wall. They will then return to Sell Military Airport for a farewell with the local community before departing for the UK. Well, how wonderful. And to know also that she's doing this walkabout then Thursday, the 25th of June, um, when she's in Frankfurt, say that they'll be meeting members of the local community. So that will be a chance. And then later on in the afternoon, they're going to be greeting members of the public to bow or not to bow? Mm. That is the question. So do get yourself along there if you are in that area and neighborhood. And then as well on Friday in Berlin. So there's a few chances there. A busy schedule, isn't it? So let's go to our next slide and talk about some royal do's and don'ts. Royal do's and don'ts for the meeting. Always curtsy in the presence of the Queen. Men should do a bow from the neck. So staying on those two points, always curtsy in the presence of the Queen and men should do a bow from the neck. Actually, you do not have to curtsy or bow um, if you are not a British national. People do get quite worked out about how to do the correct curtsy and James and I will be demonstrating when we go to our webcam. But certainly you don't have to and shortly we will be seeing a video of the uh, President Obama and Michelle Obama meeting with the Queen. And in general, men do tend to do a small bow and women do a small little bob, but you're not actually required to. Do you offer your hand out so the Queen may shake it? Well, what do you think? I really don't think so. Yeah. I mean, the Queen would have to shake so many hands yes. in a day if that were the case. Wouldn't that be tiresome? Can you imagine having a walkabout, meeting 2,000 people, mm. and all these hands being thrust up at you? It would just be a little bit too much. And of course, for royal protocol, the Queen simply wouldn't want to refuse. So here at Germany, if you are indeed seeing the Queen, unless you are being formally introduced to her, in which case you can bow, curtsy, and or shake your hand, you do not offer your hand out. You greet the Queen as Her Majesty on the first occasion and then as man. Indeed, this is the correct way to greet the Queen. You address Prince Philip and other members of the royal family as your royal highness and thereafter sir. So this is the correct formal way of address. You don't offer flowers or gifts upon meeting or seeing Her Majesty. Once again, it would just simply be impractical for the Queen to be reaching and accepting so many gifts of flowers and little keepsakes for her. There is usually um, one or two people who present to the Queen, but this is usually because her 
her maid of honor ushers that person, don't, don't yes. they, Pamela, when or you saw her? When she's doing a walkabout, you see people presenting flowers and gifts and so on, but there's always a lady in waiting on hand. There yeah. is, and they've actually been yeah, a little bit pre-selected, pre yes. absolutely. Uh, women should wear hats when attending a royal event. Oh, well, what do we think of this? Generally, the ladies do, but uh, I think it usually stipulates on any invitation or occasion what, what the dress code is. Absolutely. If you're lucky enough to receive an invite from Buckingham Palace, it will indeed put the formal dress code. If it's an afternoon uh, attending, let's say, Royal Ascot or Henley Regatta, men wear morning dress and women should indeed wear hats. However, Buckingham Palace has released a statement saying members of the royal family do not wish anyone to be put to unnecessary expense by buying special clothes. So to simply put, dress conservatively if you do want to make some sort of formal impression, but apart from that, just don't worry too much. And if you initiate a conversation with the Queen, do not inquire about the royal family. Well, actually, this is entirely inappropriate. One would never initiate a conversation with Her Majesty the Queen. This just wouldn't happen at all. You would actually wait for the Queen to address you first, and then enjoy a light-hearted conversation Try not to look too scared, although I know it's difficult. I find it funny when some of my lovely German students who arrive and they're always so very punctual and they're so very polite, but they just look so very scared when they enter my teaching room. Indeed, being polite and showing royal protocol is just as much about also having fun. We don't want to take ourselves too seriously. So going on to the next slide, talking about what's unusual about this photo, we're really looking at the fact that the Queen is indeed embracing Michelle Obama, and likewise Michelle Obama is embracing the Queen. The Buckingham Palace officially says that there are to be no hugs, no kisses on the cheeks, no touching the shoulder, and not even to leave the Queen indeed by her elbow. So we know that touching the Queen is off limits and it's also why this really broke with tradition. So we're going to now watch some footage. I'm going to just go back into the full slideshow and this is an instant of the Queen meeting the Obamas. President of the United States of America, Mrs. Obama. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So nice. Thank you so much for wonderful last night. Thank you. We were only just we were only last night. We're still trying to stay awake. I know. It's an awful time lag, isn't it? It is. It is. But he's been busy in meetings. You are just trying to get. A little less busy. I'm staying awake. You had to get breakfast. I had breakfast with the Prime Minister. I had meetings with the Chinese, the Russians. David Cameron, <laughs> and I'm proud to say I did not nod off in any of the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell the a successful day. <laughs> it's all important. Of, of course, of course. Well, that's the 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 it's always the same thing, isn't it, Jim? We're just going to all go back to that video. I'm not going to watch it again, but I'm just going to talk over a couple of points. Well, of course, the first point we're looking at is the fact that Her Majesty the Queen and Prince Philip are indeed standing very upright. They have this typical restrictive body language, very measured. It's not unlike our German body type as well. We are cousins after all. The Obamas are slightly more relaxed, and I'm sure you noticed there when Michelle Obama was talking, she was talking a little bit with her hands. It was interesting to see the way the president took out his hand, reaching from his shoulder in a very welcoming approach for a handshake. And I don't know if you noticed, but actually Prince Philip, when he shook the president's hand, it was a real one firm handshake. And we're going to practice handshake curtsies and bows shortly. To make a good royal impression, certainly a couple of jokes always help. And we heard a little joke there about the president saying that he had had breakfast with the Russians and David Cameron and he tried not to fall asleep. 
This was, however, because of the time difference. He had just flown in the night before. So what was absolutely delightful about this conversation, and remember, you may very well be meeting her soon, Her Majesty soon. You must never refer to Her Majesty just as a pronoun her. Um, well, she's talking about breakfast, asking very much about the Obama's well-being. She has a delightful inflection in her voice that's nice and light, nothing too serious. And we also hear a little giggle. You know, the Queen is well known to be, well, the Queen of small talk, really. It was reported when she met Pope Benedict in 2010 that she asked him on observing the Pope Mobile, goodness, it was a very small car you arrived in. Is the Pope Mobile a tight squeeze? So these are all the little ideas of small talk that the Queen is able to talk about. And this is something that we want to go into because the British in polite society very much have certain topics that are absolutely um, out of bounds. And here is some pictures just to prompt you. Once again, you've, you can use this for your students. And we're going to have a look at things that would open up a conversation as well as demonstrate one shortly. If you're in polite society wanting to be a lady and gentleman, we're going to start off with the good old British weather. This is a fine conversation opening starter, isn't it? It is, and it changes so rapidly, but uh, it's always a new, new topic. There's almost. always something yes. to discuss, isn't yes. there? Yes, good opening. Somebody's health. Well, I don't think you would inquire about anybody's health unless it was somebody you knew or perhaps a family member. The venue. If you're really stuck on what to say, talk about the venue, where you are. This would be most appropriate. Most of the time that we do meet, we're certainly somewhere very grand if we are attending a war function or some, some spectacular event. Yes, and with the Queen's own family, her ever extending family, with uh, children and grandchildren, one can talk about the family. Oh, well, but actually, not in, Pamela. Not in, great, not in depth. Oh, no. no, Pamela. Not oh, dear. You. Well, no, not at all. The thing is, us Brits. We don't like to release too much information, Not information about but just in general, one can say. Absolutely. I was seeing that your grandchild, your mm -hmm. grandson, perhaps is a commenting. statement, a statement yes, rather than not a question. Absolutely. These are all would yes. be absolutely. Food and drinks always something nice to talk about. Yes, and didn't we see Her Majesty the Queen asking President Obama himself, well, have you had breakfast? Now, to bread which we looked at at the beginning of the webinar, releases a statement of advice about money and work. And they're just simply not to be inquired about. There's a fine line between being interested and intrusive. Is this not the truth? And as yes. Brits, we just don't like to really reveal very much. So. The journey there, also the, one of the Queen's favourites, and then we've just got to also down in the bottom there, religion and politics. Well, we are going to steer clear of that, aren't we? So those are some choice topics. And once again, further notes about what you can do with your students. What I do want to reiterate is also bringing us to the 21st century about what etiquette means to us today. Wonderful. Another link I would really like my participants to have a look at is this very important look-up video. It's invaluable for teachers and also for students. It's about the etiquette of the future and the fact that when we're meeting today, we're using the iPhone and we are certainly not spending time with people. It's got a lot of information. Uh, once again, in terms of the notes, you will find a whole load of ideas. Um, and just having a look at the ideas of afternoon tea as well, um, I've put a whole load of the correct way to prepare the tea. And it's a wonderful um, activity to do with the students because many of them really enjoy uh, the ideas of afternoon tea. In terms of Her Majesty the Queen, Her Majesty the Queen does have an annual garden party. So we want to look at the history of tea, and these slides show us 
that the Victorians in the 1840s invented the idea of afternoon tea. This is simply your cream, jam, and scone. Thereafter, the Earl of Sandwich um, invented the idea of the sandwich, which was added to afternoon tea. So in England, you can have a high tea. This is simply the afternoon tea with the addition of champagne. However, years ago, the high tea really is what very wealthy people would refer to as their high tea because it was an opportunity for them to eat when their servants also had taken the day off. So they used to cancel dinner and instead just have the afternoon tea graduating into the evening. There's so very many wonderful things I would like to tell you about tea. One of my favorite tea shops in London is Fortnum and Mason's. This is next door to the Ritz. You can have a, a high tea there for 50 pounds. It is an absolute huge event and you will get a mixture of your cream teas and your bubblies and petit foie as well, which are some very, very wonderful delicacies. Um, there's further information also about the very first time the English received tea. We did indeed drink it for its medicinal qualities, but it was really the Victorians who turned it into an absolute afternoon activity. Remember, this was the time of Queen Victoria when she too was a high tea at the Ritz, and debutantes were introduced to her. Young ladies and gentlemen didn't have anywhere else to go. They were presented at these tea parties, and it's really quite a wonderful thing to go up to the Palm Court at the Ritz, where you will notice this frosted glass, which uh, Caesar Ritz had chosen because he believed a slight touch of pink apricot was the perfect lighting for women. So this palm court as well, as much as it's rather expensive, is one of the most wonderful places to have tea. I'm very aware that we're on five o'clock now and I could talk until the cows come home on tea and I would love to invite you all to my tea parlor where we could enjoy our afternoon tea. Over to you, Nadia. So, Rebecca, thank you very much for your presentation. I would suggest that we check out some questions. Some attendees had some questions for us. The first question, can you explain what the Queen does during the state banquet? Oh, indeed. <laughs> well, it depends. Is it that she's going or that she's being invited? The attendee has explained better. Here the question... I simply thought that it means, if it means meeting foreign guests, it is about twice a year, and this is not very often. She holds several a year, um, so it's her opportunity to meet with foreign dignitaries, and again, um, you know, she isn't a political figure, but as a monarch, she still has lots of status and power. The rule of thumb, if you were ever invited, you would look exactly at what she's doing. You eat when the queen eats. You stand up only when the Queen stands up and you sit when she sits. So we have one more question. One participant said, I'm sorry I didn't hear whether it is okay for men to wear striped ties when meeting the Queen. Because the Queen um, is patron of so many armed forces and also because many uh, private schools in England tend to have stripes and graphics, it's actually suggested that men shouldn't wear any stripes or graphics in case they misrepresent themselves accidentally. So it's advised that uh, gentlemen just simply wear a plain shirt. Okay, very fine. And one participant said, shouldn't be trooping the collar or trooping the collars. I'm not sure something. I am not sure about this term. It's trooping the color. Okay. And the color is the flag of one of the regiments, army regiments. And each year, the Queen selects one particular regiment to present its colour, and therefore it's trooping the colour. Very interesting. So these were the questions so far. I would like to uh, thank you, Rebecca, James, and what was the other part? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. <laughs> Pamela, 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 sorry. Uh, Pamela, Rebecca and James, thank you very much for your participation. This was a very interesting webinar. 
I'm sure that the participants are very curious about learning more about etiquette and about tea. I hope so, and please may I genuinely compliment all of my German students. I am forever impressed at how very well behaved and very well they participate in these workshops and also how mature they are. Um, I genuinely mean it. I find them to be such modest people, non-pretentious, and I do believe earnestly that Germany is raising just a most wonderful generation, a little bit self-conscious,